Welcome to the Sovereign and Empowered Podcast with Tracy Goody, Practical Ascension Guide. It is my mission and purpose to bring light-centered humans into their most powerful, focused, aligned, truest self ever. So in this podcast, I share from my channel with the Akashic Records and the Ascension Collective, as well as my own experiences of awakening and also host some amazing guests that you will not want to miss. If you resonate with this podcast, please share, leave a review, or let me know how it helps has impacted you. Adapting, maintaining perseverance and perspective on your soul mission part two. To maintain a strong commitment and focus on your soul mission, you must be anchored into your truth. You must persevere through the times that feel dark or challenging and continue choosing to rise up, believe in yourself, and believe with certainty in your soul mission. In this series, I'm exploring multiple ways you can maintain your perseverance and highest perspective on your soul mission to help inspire you and bring you into your truth. Part two is all about adapting. We live in a world of constant change, constant movement. Even when things appear still, on that smallest level, there's always movement, there's always vibration. So the same is true of your path. It isn't always going to be straightforward or seamless. There will be areas that feel like they are unpassable or that you don't have what it takes to keep going on the path. So for this visual, my guides brought it in less of like a path like you'd see outside or in the woods or something like that. And more like one where there's like that glass dome, like you're walking through a tunnel and it's like a glass dome with water and sea life and there's beautiful sun radiating through it. So you're walking on the stone floor, but then all around you and above you is that beautiful light reflected through the water. So just kind of keeping that in mind for the visual. So As you're going down your path, you can perceive and experience it in a number of ways. So I'm going to use three examples today. So you can experience in be the positive one. You are plowing through your path. You're letting nothing slow you down or stop you. You are raining positivity down on everything that you touch and you don't let yourself get distracted by pain or challenging emotions. You're just go, go, go. You look up and you see the beautiful water and you have no interest in what is below your feet. Now you can also be the hesitant one. So you notice the path is challenging and you really don't have any way to know if it's going to be safe or not. So you're obsessively focused on the path you're walking on and don't really notice the beautiful glow above you. You're only seeing the shadows at your feet. So you're taking these tiny steps and mainly you're trying to stay hidden and small because it feels like such a big risk. You notice the challenges and you take them as a personal attack that something must be wrong with you and your actions if this is the way things have turned out. Now you can also be perceiving and going through your path as the wise one. So you move on your path mindfully. You stay aware of what's going on around you and at your feet, but mainly your focus is what's going on within you. When you come up to a challenge, you will allow yourself space to process and understand yourself deeper. You recognize that adapting on your path is just part of the journey and your discernment is a powerful tool. You recognize that there is nothing wrong with you when challenges arise and that each person is on their own path and moving through their own lessons. You get really clear about what is under your control and what is your responsibility and what is not. You gain power and momentum as you move forward, but if you fall down, you find you're able to get back to empowerment and clarity quicker with each fall. It's like you've got the muscle memory for it. So, Each of these examples are the exact same path, but your perception and so your experience of them is different. And I know personally, I've embodied each example. So I've been that super positive that nothing will stand in my way or slow me down. And this really taught me the lesson of burnout, of honoring your ebb and flow and the beauty in slowing down and sitting with your pain, your challenges and your triggers to learn about yourself and empower yourself. I've also been that fearful, hesitant one, the one who felt like she wasn't quite safe to move forward, to be seen and heard because growth hasn't been linear. So that's another thing that kind of really brought me to be that hesitant one on the path is feeling like, oh, well, things should progress like this, like A, B, and C. This very linear, very um, upward focus line is what I'm traveling on. And then as it turns out, that's not what the path is at all. 
I really got into a habit of allowing that trauma of challenging situations and lessons to diminish my perceived value and the value of the work I do in this world. Again, lots of great lessons in there. So I've also been the wise one on the path. So the one who keeps all the best parts of the positive one, you know, all that momentum and forward movement and combines it with the self-awareness of the hesitant path. In this perspective of your ever-changing path, you see that everything's shifting around you and you notice themes in the collective and in your community and you keep coming back to your center. So you're really letting your intuition lead the way and trust and honor the journey that unfolds for you with curiosity and openness. So on this changing path, you can easily get distracted from, you know, all the things that are going on around you, what's going on in relationships, in life, in the collective. You can take on the energy, the heaviness, and the thought forms of others as a way to subconsciously show that you care. So with enough of this taking on and not enough release and rebalance, you can easily get weighed down and discouraged from your mission, your passion, and your joy. So how do you start to rebalance and kind of move closer to that wise one on the path? Number one is let go of the heaviness you carry and how that heaviness and or relationships is impeding your path forward. So you want to ask yourself, what relationships or circumstances in my life do I feel are creating a barrier to empowered forward movement on my path? So for example, for me, something I used to believe and still comes up every now and then depending what's going on is that because I've got all these children, all of these things to do, always always something to do, somebody to look after, something to think of, that that is a barrier to my forward movement. That's a barrier to my progress. So that's a old program that's really not mine and that I actually didn't believe as truth, but I took it on as truth and I allowed it to create a lot of hesitations and a lot of you know, subconscious excuse, excuses that would leave me feeling disempowered. So again, you're just exploring these and you're uncovering what is the truth and what is old programming that you're ready to remove. And then you want to take action on your intuitive guidance. So you can also, number two, expand your perspective. Our perspective is everything. So let yourself explore what is possible for you on this path. What do you truly desire? And also, how do you perceive the path in general? Do you perceive it as supporting? Do you feel like you're worthy? Do you feel like you're emotionally fulfilled? Does the path seem welcoming or daunting? And why is that? So let your perspective of the path match your truth, not be created out of some automatic program. Number three is create for the joy of creation. So the pressures that many of us feel around success, money, creating an impact can stifle our true creative power and create this clog in our divine energy that streams through us. So in your imagination, take all of that pressure out of the picture and give yourself a blank canvas to work with, totally clean slate. What do you feel called to create? Again, keep your perspective very open here. You're creating simply to get those channels flowing. It doesn't have to be your best work or even anything that makes sense. Maybe you are an energy healer and you feel like painting or cooking to let that creativity flow. It's not about the result, but it's about the energetic structure that you're putting into place by opening up this channel, recognizing the value in it, and experiencing the peace and joy of creation. All right, so remember the perception of your path creates the experience you have while you're on it. The path will continue to change and evolve, so it's all up to how you will adapt to these shifting conditions. Thank you so much for listening today. If you resonate with my work, visit me at tracygoody.com and explore even more ways to deepen your experience of sovereignty, empowerment, and your truth.